Thunder Spears. Interesting title. The calm before the storm. So this is finally happening. The long anticipated encounter between Aaron and Reiner and Bertholdt. But this is so much more because the scouts. Beast Titan. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna come down to Eren. Yeah, they have the advantage. They've been waiting here, planning. There's probably more that we don't know yet. What the hell is that thing? What's up with this face? Another human. Oh, we saw another guy, right? <laughs> And he's got a duck face, that's for me the weirder part. He's got him well trained. <laughs> the guy looks like he's dancing. Right, they strand them first. Then really, they sort of win, right? There's no escape. Yeah, it was pointed out to me that I missed something in the previous episode. Monkey Titan and friends are inside, further inside than the scouts, which traps their retreat. Yeah, then they don't even have to be that aggressive. Exactly, yeah, they can just wait it out. Which forces an attack. Yeah, and they just send in the, the grunt titans to maybe wear him down. And then Reiner, <laughs> just, you know, gonna smash them anyway. Levi's eagerly waiting. <laughs> He's outwardly cool, but in inwardly probably very worried. Yeah, take down the... Armored Titan. No big deal. That's what he was saying. He had the secret weapon. Thunder Spears. <laughs> you got it, Erwin. No hesitation. Ooh, this is a huge task. Wow. Man, this is really exciting and also really nerve-wracking. Because I believe Levi can do it, if anyone can, but, I mean... Still got the knife in his neck. Armin, man. Armin. Armin, yeah. <laughs> of course it was. Who else would it be? It's always Armin. Whoa. I feel like even if I'm the Armor Titan in that form, I'm still going to be scared of Erwin Smith. Wow, this is pretty genius. I don't know what the actual plan is yet. I feel like this might be a decoy, but I'm not, like, I'm not like a strategist or anything, but just thinking about it off the top of my head, they're luring you into a game. They've set it so that there are specific things they want you to do, which will set you up to be annihilated. So you, you can't do the obvious, and I feel like even though certain things put you in a, a disadvantage, that's already a given anyway. So you gotta, you gotta be crazy. You gotta play crazy. <laughs> and you gotta play to your strengths. And one of their strengths is that it's pretty clear to anybody who knows the scouts that they'll sacrifice anything. Any one person is expendable. Any one thing is expendable. So their bluffs work. The only non-expendable thing is Aaron. So if he leaves, that is a big WTF moment. You know, like, what is going on? Then you start wondering, and that's the exact moment you get hit with the Thunder Spears. <laughs> Double fake. Or maybe it's a triple fake. They're so close. So he's taking the bait. But he knows it's bait. <laughs> flashback. Strategic flashback. I feel like the only person who has the, the full story here is Erwin. Maybe Armin. There's a lot I'm worried about right now. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, that too. I'm worried about Erwin right now. Yeah, and he's been training, and he's so much more in control right now. He's actually 
like totally different as a person. The fact that he's even listening conscientiously to Erwin's orders, you know, and not giving into rage and things like that, he just feels so different now. A lot has changed since this first encounter. Yeah, he's a lot better. I feel like just him being more calm goes a long way. He can like <laughs> take his time and evade. That's shockwave though. Very poetic place for revenge. Tell him, Titan Aaron. There he is. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this is actually the moment for it. You know, personally, I don't think any emotion is is negative. I just think it's how it's applied, right? So if Aaron's actually in control and thinking clearly and believing in Erwin and his friends and his unit, but can use this feeling to fight better, go for it. I don't know. I think anger and frustration and rage, they, they can actually be really good things. It's just, they gotta be channeled correctly. For me, those have been really powerful motivators. You know, like even things like envy. Envy for me is a great thing because I can separate it from the person and just use it as like fuel for having drive towards getting the thing myself. You know, my point is that even though Eren still has that extreme rage, this time it feels different. It feels like righteous anger. And one thing I've been looking for from him for a while is that these feelings are actually connected to something useful. And at this point in the show, I'm very invested in the scouts. So this is one of the first times I feel like I can actually get behind Eren in these moments. Usually I'm sort of like, well, you should know the full story, you know, <laughs> or let's not just see everyone as not deserving to breathe. I still know there's a lot more to Reiner that we don't know. So it's not like I want Reiner to die, but at this moment, I feel like this mission to survive is valid. It's completely valid and important and something that I want myself. So, you know, I'm with it. Thunder Spears, a concentrated blow comparable to a strike of lightning. You're telling me they have this technology, but they don't have can openers? Something's wrong there. I can't tell if Erwin is prioritizing scout survival, which would be great for me to think about, because I secretly believe he really cares, or if this is a decoy that leads to sacrifice. Don't, don't reflect on your life. Don't reflect on your life. No, 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 stop. Because it means so much to him. I don't like where this is going, honestly. Wow, that scene though. That was so beautifully done with the writing and the music. My heart sort of breaks for Erwin, even though he's depicting himself as sort of a villain there. And I think that's part of what the show's doing. Like, I think one of the, the themes or one of the suggestions is that there's darkness that exists in everyone. You know, like even someone like Erwin, who on the surface seems perfect, is a slave to something, I guess, as Kenny would say. But is that really so bad? You know, I think there are multiple ways to look at it. One is that Erwin didn't ask for a lot of this. He didn't ask for his father to be killed just because he asked a question. He didn't ask for the, the royal dynasty to hide the truth or kill dissenters. He was born into that world, and then he took it upon himself to make changes. So, you know, yeah, that was selfish. I feel like there's sort of no getting out of that on some level. Everything is going to be selfish at its core. Well, selfish might be the wrong word because that implies that it's negative. You know, it's going to be self-directed. It's going to be self-driven. And to that end, look what he accomplished. They unraveled this whole conspiratorial kingdom. Now, the, the outcome of that may still be unclear, but that's always the case. You know, he, he dispensed with a societal lie, and that was his focus, and he did it very well well and and people appreciate that about him people can see that you know i think the reason why they're rejoicing the scouts now is because on some level they're aware that something that harms them has collapsed and that's on that's on erwin he's doing that thing where he he's being really hard on himself and seeing himself as a villain and, and that in a way makes him great or is part of what makes him great you know the fact that he would consider that the fact that he's he's allowing for a range of nuance and doesn't see himself as a savior that i think is one of the best qualities of a good leader and then another thing which is more difficult to think about i think is that some Somebody can do truly evil things and still be great, you know, and when I say great, I don't mean that they are good people or that their actions are good. What I mean is there's a sort of realization to be had that, that even people who do terrible things can get. 
A good example of this, I think, would be Kimberly, right? Like, Kimberly is a terrible person, but a great man in that sense, where he's just so special. Like, he's 100% or 125% Kimberly all the time, uncompromisingly. And I think Erwin has those traits. So, even if everything I said before were not true, even if he was this terrible person and he was super selfish, he's still a great man in my eyes that has traits that I would like to embody. Just like Kimberly has traits I would like to embody without the evil, you know, without all the, the horrible stuff. That's a difficult thing to think about because I think we like to put people in, in neat categories of like good bad right or good and evil and also continuing with this this weirdness just because someone has done no wrong doesn't mean they're they're good you know it probably just means they're ineffectual or harmless pretty much everyone has the same evil in their hearts what separates people who have done terrible things from people who have never done terrible things in a lot of cases is that they just don't have the power to do them and that's a very cynical take but the reason i think that's important is because i think the useful focus should always be oneself and so recognizing one's own evil to me is the start of something great and actually is what prevents tragedy. So I admire the, the hell out of Erwin for that speech, honestly. It had sort of the, maybe the opposite of the intended effect on me. To be fair, and this is completely obvious at this point, I'm just a total Erwin fanboy, so. I think the one thing that seals the deal for me, that might have changed things, is if he were deliberately deceptive. If he wasn't clear about what the scout role was. If he actually didn't care on some level about people's lives. The people who have died for him, the mountain of corpses he's standing on, on some level at least, they gave their lives for him willingly based on the values he showed that were not lies. He is those things. He does want those things. And whether or not that motivation is on some level selfish to me is neither here nor there. <laughs> It's interesting that this is sort of a parallel with Aaron, right? I mean, I think Erwin just has a different idea of what freedom means. For him, it's the truth. <laughs> Such an Aaron thing to say, but he's proving that to be correct. Repent, Reiner, repent. <laughs> Save yourself. Oh no, Aaron got a little carried away there. <laughs> this move though, wow, the power. Yeah, let's not sleep on Reiner. Yeah, so Aaron's job is not to defeat him, but to create an opening for these thunder spears. The jujitsu continues. I'm imagining the writers, or the animators rather, practicing this in the <laughs> the animation floor <laughs> just to get it perfect you know that is Bertle inside of him maybe man you have no idea what's coming do it while flying too in the eyes no less now it's gonna explode, right? Yep. Well, they found their opening. Hang in there, Connie. <laughs> Connie's reactions are always so great. Finish him off, huh? It's no small thing. Yeah, it hurts him more than anybody. You know, he talks a big game, but... I know this is weird, but I really don't want Reiner to die. I just want to get his story. <sighs> Why? He's still alive, though. You know how I know? I can prove it. If he died... That would make Berthold very upset. Berthold is a, is a sweet person and doesn't deserve that. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Evil has its limits, you know? Darkness has its limits. You're not gonna kill Reiner and let Berthold live with that. That's not... You can't... No. Yeah, and in typical form, in classic Attack on Titan form, as I watch, this ending becomes more significant. I think I was right in my, my guess about why it mattered. All these flashbacks to their innocent teenage years. Cadet years. Um, well, this is... This is very exciting. <laughs> it's uh, it's very intense. One of the things I think makes this so effective is that there are just so many points converging and each point has been built well. Obviously, I'm talking a lot about Reiner. The fact that I feel a lot for him even though he's had limited screen time is just awesome. Then this is the place where Aaron was 
born, where the journey started. This feels like the culmination of Erwin's arc. Levi, the ultimate soldier being given the ultimate challenge. This really feeling like a decisive battle for humanity or the other side, whatever that side is. Each of these elements are good in and of themselves and they're all happening here simultaneously very quickly. So it's riveting. I already know, I can say with pretty much certainty at this point that this arc is topping my previous favorite action arc which was the forest this is gonna blow that out of the water <laughs> i can already feel it it's just thrilling there's no other way to put it really so yeah i'll see you in the next episode when reiner survives and survives